right? It's a good day to you, my uh, young brother, young sir. So we are proceeding further with our test preparation. So previously, I took you through some important aspects on learning unit number two. So with respect to learning unit two, we were looking at the concept about the accounting equation and the double entry system, whereby I mentioned that um, the accounting equation can be expressed as assets equals to equity plus liabilities. And with the double entry system, what this principle of accounting entails is that for every debit entry made, there should be a corresponding uh, credit entry. Normally, this happens whenever a transaction is transpired. And so I began to explain the elements of the basic accounting equation. Uh, to be particular, I, I touched on assets in a greater detail. I touched on assets to say what is an asset in terms of its definition, of which I explained to you that it's a present economic resource, which is controlled or rather under the control of the business entity as a result of a past event. So that's what the an asset is by definition. I also gave you classification of assets, which is in two groups, namely current assets, as well as the, the current, sort of the non-current assets, right? I did also give you examples and then I went further to explain the nature of assets to say um, what causes assets to increase and which side when you are looking at a ledger account, would you see an asset increasing? So when you're talking of the ledger account, just to recap on that, a ledger account is something like this. It's just a T account where, for instance, if this is the account, uh, let's say it's bank. So this will be the debit side and that will be the credit side. So when you're seeing assets increase on the debit side, it means it's increasing on this side of the ledger account bank or in this case as an asset, right? And then if it will be decreasing, it will be taking place on the credit side. And that's what I was illustrating with this explanation, which I gave you previously, right? So I think with assets so far, so good, right? Yes. Beautiful. Okay. So now we want to proceed to something else today because I've already given you examples even about assets using this illustration. So today we want to start off with another element to discuss, which is called liabilities, right? So what is a liability? So the first point of departure that I would like to begin with is to define what a liability is for you, right? So that's where we would like to begin, right? I'm going to send you these notes as well, all right? All right, no serious. Beautiful. So let's define what a liability is to make it easier. Is it okay? Now, uh, I want to also give you guidance with respect to what your textbook stipulates on this. So I want you to go to, okay, I'll give you the page number. Go to page 29 of your textbook. Page 29. So on page 29, um, that's where you see the definition of a liability stipulated. So a liability essentially uh, can be defined as the present obligation, the present obligation to transfer economic, economic, resources right due to past events so i want you to look at this element so number one is the present obligation right to do what to transfer economic resources why as a result of some past events that would have transpired are we together? Now, let's explain what is an obligation. If you are obligated to do something, it means you are legally uh, um, 
You're legally obliged to commit or to honor the obligation in a way. Are we together? So normally for a liability to exist, there has to be some form of a legal contract that has been signed, all right, with a third party whereby they transfer rights to you in exchange of you having to repay them for those resources or rights they've given to you. So you then have to repay them over some time. Does it make sense? Yes. All right. So now that's what um, a liability is. Now let's look at the classification. Let's look at the classification. Classification of liabilities. Like assets, liabilities can be classified into two groups, namely current liabilities and non-current liabilities. Are we together? Yes. Now let's have a look at typical examples of what makes up current liabilities. But before we explain that class, I mean, that explanation, we need to understand what are current liabilities. And then, of course, we'll look at examples. So, a current liability essentially, this refer to those type of liabilities that ought to be settled or that ought or that should be. within a period less than one year. So far, so good? Yes. So that's what current liabilities really are. So it's those type of liabilities that ought to be settled within a period less than one year. What are those typical examples that makes up current liabilities? If you look at the bottom of page 21, it will include things such as overdrafts, Meaning to say when you are not having money in your account and then now you're beyond the value zero. Liabilities, current liabilities here would also involve creditors, people that you buy goods or items on credit from. It would also include SARS, right? All right. That is if in the case where you have got uh, to, to, to deal with with input VAT and likes. Are we are we together, young man? Yes. All right. Other other examples of current liabilities here, besides bank overdraft, creditors, SARS, it is it can also involve short term loans. It would also include, let's say, for instance, you have a pre, I mean accrued expense. I will explain to you what is an accrued expense, but an accrued expense in simple terms, it's an expense that you would incur with a promise to pay it at a later date in future. Good example, you incur some water utility bill or cost expense in your day-to-day -day business with the promise that you're gonna pay or settle that account at a later date in future. So that's what actually makes up an accrued expense, right? So that's current liabilities. And then we have to also look into other classification group of liabilities, which is non-current liabilities. So essentially, it's this one refers to those type of liabilities that should be settled um, after a period longer than one year. So this one, they ought to be paid after one year. Do you see what's happening there? Yes. 
And do you see the difference between them and uh, what you call it and the current liabilities? Yes. It's... Is it making sense so far? Yes, 100%. Beautiful. Now, what are the typical examples? If you go back on page 29, you would see that um, non-current liabilities would include things such as mortgage loans. It would also include long-term loans, which is normally what they call bank loans. Long-term loans, it's part of it, right? So long-term loans, it's like when you obtain a loan from the bank, you know, um, and you have to pay the bank maybe after a period longer than one year, such type or kind of liabilities would be regarded to be non-current liabilities by nature. Are we together so far? Yes. Right. Now, what is the what what is the nature or the accounting nature of a liability? Accounting nature of liabilities, right? Now, here's the accounting nature of liabilities, and I'm going to try and use the table similar to what I gave you the last time. Now, with you just notice that there'll be slight exceptions in terms of the differences, right? Now, with the liability, here is the issue. And this applies to whether you're dealing with a current liability or a non-current liability, right? So I want you to observe what's happening over there. So liabilities by nature, they decrease on the debit side and they would increase on the credit side. Do you observe what is happening there, uh, Matugu? Yes. Right. Very important. Take note of that. Now, so what happens with liabilities? They decrease on the credit side and then they increase on the credit. But we want to understand, okay, fine. We, we do get the analogy that, uh, I mean, they increase and decrease you know, obviously in different sides. But now let's explain what causes liabilities to increase. So liabilities would increase on the credit side, right? So far, so good. Yes. That's number one fact that we have to establish about liabilities. They increase all the time on the credit side. But the question is, what is it that causes liabilities to increase on the credit side? It's as a result of having obtained credit from the lender or a supplier. Now, a supplier, in this case, I'm referring to a creditor, meaning to say somebody that would have sold something to you on credit basis. So that's what causes liabilities to increase. When you obtain credit from the lender, or you have obtained credit from a supplier. Meaning, say when you bought something on credit, like for example, the, 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 the scenario which I gave you where we had acquired a vehicle on credit, right? Such a typical scenario like that would result in liabilities having to increase because of that. So that's what causes liabilities to increase. Of course, we're gonna look at some typical examples but then we also want to analyze what is it that causes liabilities to decrease. And we understand that they will decrease on the debit side of the ledger account. But the question is, what is it that causes liabilities to, to decrease? It is as a result of repayment of debt. Or should I say repayment of, yeah, of the debt to the lender or creditor in this case. So my, right. Lender or the creditor. So in other words, when you pay off your debt, 
when you pay off your debt, that's what happens. That's what would cause liabilities to decrease and it happens which side? Debit it side. happens on the debit side. That's very important to take note of that, right? Now, I would like you to look at some typical, uh, we're gonna look of course at some typical examples as we progress further. But another element that I would like to discuss with you is equity, because you saw equity as well, right? Yes. Equity is one of the other elements that is affected by uh, by 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 the uh, what you call it the accounting equation, right? Now let's define what equity is. And now to do that, I would like you to uh, to go to page, I'll give the page number in a bit. Go on page 32, trying to see what number, all right. And it's not really explain it in your textbook, but can I explain it to you? Because you really need to understand it. Is it fine? Yes, it's okay. Because uh, you have to make sense of what is all happening over there. Right. So equity. Look, uh, in simple terms, it, it refers to the capital resources deployed to start a business entity. Notice it's not only about to start a business entity, but it's also to expand a business entity's operations. So what if I just explained to you, that's equity. It refers to the capital resources deployed to start or to expand a business entity's operations. Now, how do we do that? It comes in form of what we call capital. Now, capital comes in different ways. It can be cash or it can be physical assets invested by the owner. Right? So far, so good? Yes. Physical assets invested into the business by the owner of the business, right? But at the same time, when you're looking at this issue about equity, right? It can also be referred to as the residual, residual interest after deducting liabilities from assets. Now, what do we mean? We are simply saying that equity is equals to assets minus liabilities so that's how you're able to ascertain that residual interest so when you're saying residual interest it simply means what is remaining after we have deducted liabilities from the assets that the business owns so far so good yes sir beautiful beautiful now when you're looking at equity i want you to understand something also which I, I'm just going to try and explain and bring it into the picture. Incomes, all right, would increase equity. Are we together then? Please, this one, I'm going to put it in a different color because it's very, very, very important. Incomes would increase equity. Meaning to say, when you go to the equity column here, when you get a question where you have to analyze the effects that a transactions, I mean, a transaction has on the basic accounting equation, incomes would increase this equity column. That's what I'm trying to mean when I'm saying incomes Whoa. increases equity. Are we together? Yes. And then if I'm saying 
expenses decreases equity, it means it will be a minus for this column on the equity um, column when you are doing the analysis of transactions. So essentially, then we are saying expenses would decrease equity effectively. Does it make sense? Yes. Right. Another thing that would decrease equity is drawings would decrease equity. But now we need to understand under what circumstances. So it decreased equity when the owner takes something that belongs to the business for his or her personal use. All right. Now, drawings on the other hand, though, would increase equity if, right, the owner now this time around, instead of taking, you'll be retaining whatever that he or she had taken out of the business, all right, for his or personal use. So whenever the owner is now retaining something that he or she had in initially taken for personal use. Here's what happens. Notice with the taking, if the owner of the business is taking, here's what happens. It would decrease equity. Are we together there? So I mean, drawings would decrease equity when the owner takes something that belongs to the business for what? For personal use. Very important. Expenses effectively does the same. Expenses naturally would actually decrease uh, decrease the equity of the business. Are we together? Yes. But uh, on the on the on the contrary, drawings would what increase equity. So it has got two effects. It would increase equity if the owner is now retaining something that belongs to the business which he which he or she had initially taken for his or her personal use notice if the let's say you are running your business uh matu and then you decided to invest 50k and somewhere along the way, you feel like, um, I need some cash agently, and you withdrew 2,000 rands out of your business account. Now, that money that is coming out of the business account, it's money that belongs to the business, not your personal money. So when you do your accounting to account for that transaction, you would have to factor that transaction as a drawings transaction. So now as such, it means you are accounting for it in a case where the owner is taking something that belongs to the business for personal use. So ultimately what that means is it would decrease equity when you're doing your books. But when you now return that 2,000 rands back into the business account, right? When you're returning, it will increase equity in the equity column on the analysis of, of what? Basic accounting equation. Are we together? Yes. Now, those examples, like example 34 uh, on page 34, example on page 35, I've already given you examples where I gave you a transaction where we were buying a car on credit and buying a car on cash. You remember these examples? First example yes. is where the motor vehicle was bought for cash. So that's almost similar to what they have on page 34. It was not a motor vehicle, but it was just merchandise, right? So when you buy merchandise, what happens? What do you debit? You debit the merchandise and what do you credit? Because you bought it cash, you credit bank. True or false? True, right? Yes, true. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so having said that, um, now, what makes up expenses, right? Because I've explained to you about equity. I want to talk to you a little bit about expenses and incomes.
I just want to explain a little bit about expenses and what? And incomes. Are we together? Yes. Are you ready for that one? Yes, now I'm ready, sir. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right, I'm going to explain it to you just now. Right, so expenses versus incomes. So to explain this too, I'm going to draw some sort of like a table so that you can so that you can be able to understand the differences between those two, right? So on the one side, I'm gonna be explaining about expenses. On the other side, talking about incomes. Now in expense, young men, these are costs of running the business. Are we together? Yes. So just to explain to you, by definition, okay, I don't know what's happening there, but let me, can you, can you see the word document where I'm writing? Uh, yes, yes, I can see. Okay. So with expenses, right? With expenses, here's the issue that I want you to picture. Expenses, these are costs associated with running a business entity and examples what are the examples of cost of running a business, young man? Any examples that you may think of? Sorry, sir, please repeat. Pardon me? Sorry, sir, please repeat, sir. It's what? Sir, I'm saying please repeat, sir. Yeah, my question is, what, what are the costs that one can incur with regards to running a business? What are those costs that you may incur hey. daily or monthly? Uh, can it be can it be taxes? What? Uh, can it be taxes? Taxes. Uh, rates and taxes. Yeah, it's part of it. Rates and taxes. Uh huh. What else? Uh oh, it says cost of sales. Yeah. Uh, what you, rent you expense. Salaries and wages, right? Yes. Rental expenses, right? Yes. Fuel costs in case, right? What else? Depreciation oh. is part of it as well. What else can you think of? Uh, cost of sales. Yeah, you mentioned cost of sales. Oh, okay. Uh, repairs and maintenance. Repairs and maintenance costs. All of these. These are typical examples of what makes up expenses. Now, what is incomes? Incomes can be explained as revenue right generated by the business in the course of running operations does it make sense 
examples yes, would be what? Sales, service fees, profit on sale of an asset, Credit losses recovered. Dividends received. What else? Interest income. Just to name a few. Yes. Are we together? Yes. So this is the differences between expenses and income. So those are expenses. And on the other hand, these are the incomes of the business. Right, so on the next uh, video of our lecture five, right, of our lecture five, I'll be proceeding to give you some typical examples on page 62, all right? So we're gonna look at examples the question on page 62. I want you to go page 62. All right. Yes, I'm there. You're there. Right. Do you see that example 2.12? Yes. We're going to look at that. So after five minutes, let's reconnect again, and then we continue. Is it fine? Yes, sir. Appreciate it. All right. All right, sir. Are we? Are we? Stop, sir. Stop, stop. 